The crucial variable in determining whether we end up in utopia or dystopia is public policy. So how optimistic or pessimistic people should feel is purely a function of how governments respond. Because any technology is going to be disruptive. It's going to take some jobs and create some new ones. There's going to be a need for retraining and you know, giving people new skills. So the countries that are doing a good job in retraining workers actually, I think, have a bright future. But the problem is most countries are not doing that. We have to expand the notion of a job. So for example, there are people who perform incredibly valuable services for their community, such as taking care of young children, being a parent, taking care of aging relatives, uh, engaging in community service, you know, teaching people new language skills, uh, teaching people how to uh, uh, develop uh, new skills. Like those are all valuable things that are really good for the community, but we don't call them jobs and we don't pay people and we don't provide social benefits for those individuals. Ford and General Motors used to own the automobile industry. And we, you know, for decades, we let them make cars however they wanted. And it turns out the cars weren't very safe and there are a lot of people getting killed. And so as a society, we regulated the, auto, uh, the automobile industry. Uh, we said there had to be mandatory seatbelts. Uh, there had to be airbags. There had to be a variety of safety uh, features that were built into that. We're at that same point now in regard to digital technology. I mean, you're absolutely right. Private companies are developing the technology, but we have the means to tell them your technology has to serve human values. It can't be unfair. It can't be uh, biased. Uh, we have to understand how it's making decisions, what kind of data it's using, uh, what, how the factors are uh, weighted. That then allows us to make sure the technology is not serving us.